and the start they give my Mogadishu trip. I'm slightly nervous, um, obviously because where I'm going, but still very excited. I'll continue this diary throughout the trip. Our next stop will be Istanbul. to take off to Mogadishu. told to wait and don't check myself in, wait um, before passport control and my guide ain't here. This is kind of a, a nerve wracking time. Um, the flight it has come in early but I'm stuck in Mogadishu, uh, passport control, no guide, nowhere to go and a load of security guards wanting to push me around. So God knows what's going to happen now. The guards are starting to lose patience with me. I'm not supposed to be videoing this inside the terminal but I'm stuck in Mogadishu airport the worst in the world, with no guide and nowhere to go. I can't go out um, because it's too dangerous. So I've got to stay here and wait and just upset the guards. security um, which I'll be able to video and show you pretty soon. Um, it's pretty hectic here, bombs gone off, um, restaurants been blown up. I can see if I can get down there um, and see if I, they let, how far they let me go. Our guards are um, a little bit apprehensive on how much you can show us but hopefully I get close as, as I can. But I want to see how, how, how much this has changed over a period of time and hopefully it has changed for the better half of the worse. So here we go, day starts now. Nur is going to take me to all the places that uh, most of you would like to see. So hopefully he is to a bit of luck today. He seems to be a good fixer because he said yes to everything at the moment. Parents go out and do the city tour now. We only have two hours out 
six guards, and then in here, Noor, my guide, um, is very edgy. As you can see, I mean, it's not like a general holiday because you actually aren't allowed out without your escort. Barriers beyond barriers beyond barriers, and this is just a hotel. This is normal life. Let's see how we get on. Lido Beach. Oh, there's lots of people. Nobody here last time. Wow, what a change. I can't believe this. I was walking down here and there was empty. There was nobody here. It was a warm, hot, sunny day. I'm walking along the top of the Global Hotel and I can't believe that there actually has been brought life. This is a place, you've got all these people. They're quite resilient because just three days ago, 20 got killed just up the road. Unbelievable. They say it's safe, but I'm surrounded by uh, six guards. So, the smell here, you can smell fish, sea. Make it back we're off to Denmark. Uh, I'm going back to London, then back to how's Denmark. The in London? Hey, how's the weather? Uh, it's like it right. normally, yeah, it's raining. Right. Yeah, raining. You don't, you don't sound Somali, and you sound like West British. Indian, yeah, British yeah, West yeah, Indian. Yeah, yeah. All right, boys. Which is the best footballer here? Who's the best footballer? Who's number one footballer? Who's Ronaldo? same beach as I walked um, three years ago. It's a lot different than uh, it was then. Although this part probably is the part, the safe part of the town. Now I'm tired. <laughs> Absolutely shattered. Old man playing football. Thank you. Brilliant. That is a difference. Thank you very much. So I have Somali military looking after me. Yeah. Wow. Not private security. No. That's even better. Private security nowadays they are not uh, not, not, not that popular here. No. They are sometimes uh, can't go respect areas no. because they are not government. Because I've got the government um, people involved in this, that's why I can go and look at this restaurant. Yeah. We're on our way over to restaurant um, it's quite prevalent because it was in the news just two days ago um, I'm hoping to have a look around um, Nur, my guide um, said that we can go inside and have a look around I've got permission which is I feel so lucky and privileged to be able to do that and hopefully the same will be with the hotel this is the uh, restaurant but just a few days ago, um, 
as you can see, got blown up. We're just about to go inside. At the moment, we're at the uh, restaurant. They've got one on the way to go. The lady that's here is now in hospital. Hopefully, we can walk through and have a look and see what's going on. Part of the uh, car that exploded, it says uh, Toyota, just two, three days old. Quite daunting to realise that only two days ago, 15 people lost their life in this building. All the traces of blood. Quite shocking. Well, that was quite okay. shocking, that building. Um, they hadn't even cleaned up the blood in the front. I managed to get a carb souvenir part of the uh, truck that got damaged. It seems strange. Um, I'm sitting in the room, um, our driver's gone for prayers. Shibab about to make an attack, not far from where we are now. It's a strange feeling, I suppose I'm supposed to feel probably a bit of a fine and tense. And it seems like you're trying to make a story up to make your trip more interesting, but it actually is happening. Um, he asked me a um, question, do I want to go and see what happens if it happens, if one goes off, and I said yes. I don't know if that makes me some sort of gore hunter, what? I don't think it does because that's not the reason I, I, I want to go and see. It's just that it's, it's kind of a bit of history, it's a bit of a feel. I suppose it leads you to understand a little bit more what they go through daily. I see the blown up restaurant and then we're about to go and see the hospital see the people in there that got injured. And then the security forces says a bomb attack is imminent. It's just such a mixture.